Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Fantastic Friday. It is that day right near the weekend. I hope and pray that you've had a wonderful time to do all the things that you needed to do. I want to take a moment again to say congratulations to all of our graduates, those who graduated last week, those who will be graduating this weekend. As we know, some traditions on Mother's Day, uh, that's the weekend that they have graduations. Always remember those graduates and always remember Mother. Give her just what she needs on that Mother's Day. Today, I invite you to look with me into the book of Genesis, the seventh chapter, verses 1 through 24. This is a very powerful passage. It's the passage that picks up where we left off on yesterday, where God tells Noah to go into the boat, to take your family with you, and to take the ones that I've said can get in, but only the righteous will be saved. So the text lets us see that in verse 2, that he took seven pairs of male and female of each animal that was approved for eating and sacrifice. See, some of us, when we think about the ark, we think he took two of every kind. Well, part of that is true. Part of that is not the whole story. See, he took seven pair of all of those animals that were approved for eating and sacrifice. That tells us right there, hold up. There's some things that we should not be eating. There's some things that should not be a part of our diet, but those things that are good for us, he says, take seven pairs because I need for them to populate and to replenish. But also I need for you to be able to have something to eat. He took seven kind of every bird. And then the text goes on to say that it was on the day that he got everything that God had told him to do. He takes them into the ark and now seven days the water begins to pour and it rained for 40 days and for 40 nights. All the living creatures that were upon the earth began to drown. And so God tells Noah, I want you to do this. Now, bear in mind at this time, Noah was 600 years old. Can you believe Noah has been preaching for hundreds of years and he can only get his family saved? Some of us need to rethink our ministries in our lives. We always think it's about numbers, but it's about quality. If Noah preached all those years and is at age 600, he builds an ark, he hasn't retired, he's still preaching, and only a few people got saved. We need to be encouraged that if all of us put our effort into finishing what God has called us to do, not getting confused by numbers, we'd all be better off and we will stick to what we have. It doesn't say that Noah got tired of building the ark, so he said, I'm going to retire. It doesn't tell us that Noah got tired of building the ark, and he said, I'm going to do something else. But Noah had a love for God. He wanted to do what God had called him to do. Now, Noah has the approved animals for sacrifice and for eating. He has those with him. He has three different decks. He's 600. And on the 17th day of the second month, all the underground waters erupt on the earth. And rain came down and water came up. That was a huge flood. This is the first story that we hear of a worldwide flood. It was only Noah and his family that got saved and those animals that he put on, on the boat. One of my great nephews asked me the question. He's one who loves dinosaurs and things like that. He said to me, Uncle Paul, can you tell me why there are no more dinosaurs on earth? And I looked at him and I said, oh, you mean to tell me you haven't read the story? He said, what story? I said, they were too big to fit on the ark because they would have eaten everything else. So that's the reason dinosaurs became extinct. Well, my brothers and sisters, we find out that the people of their day became extinct. God said, I'm going to have some new breed of people. I want to have people that will repopulate the earth and do the right thing. It lets us see that when Noah had done everything that God had called him to do, it was then that we find out the water had covered the highest mountains of the highest peaks and everything was dead. And God said, Noah, I got some further instructions for you and I'll tell you a little bit more about it on tomorrow. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Always know that you're exceedingly and abundantly blessed. And in the year of 20 and 23, God has some blessings bigger and better than you ever thought you would see. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. 
Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Oh,